autocatalyzed reaction is a reaction where one of the products then goes on to catalyze the reaction and speeds it up. In theory, this sounds quite straightforward, but the questions are quite tricky. At A level, at least on the AQA exam board, there is only one example of an autocatalyzed reaction that's named, and this is the one that comes up most often. However, the general principles behind this you could take and apply to any question. Um, so the question which comes up most frequently, and often it is broken uh, down a little more than this, but this is uh, basically what it looks like. Um, and the first thing we need to be able to do is to actually identify the species, species that are reacting. And so if we look at this um, reaction here, we've got um, acidified potassium manganate reacting with sodium ethane dioate. Um, we should know that the manganate 7 ion, it can't exist as an Mn7 plus ion, it is actually MnO4 minus. The ethane dioate ion is based on um, um, ethane dioic acid that's been deprotonated twice. So it looks something like this. There are different ways to represent it. I tend to think of it like this. Anyway, regardless of how we represent it, that is C2O4 2 minus. So these are our two species which are reacting, and we are going to be producing a catalyst in this reaction. So the first thing that I always, always recommend you do is to um, write some half equations. It's really hard to remember the overall equations for these, and admittedly you can do in this question, that's fine, um, but my memory simply is not good enough to be able to, um, to do it all from scratch, and therefore I always do half equations. So let's start with this uh, manganate um, species first. Uh, you should know from your work on redox titrations that this uh, MnO4 minor species can react and it can be turned into Mn2+. Uh, we then need to balance our oxygen atoms, so we're going to have four H2Os. We then need to balance our hydrogens, so we need eight H+. We finally need to balance our charges. On this side at the moment we've got plus seven in total, this side we've got plus two, so we need five electrons on that side, and that is our first half equation. The C2O4 species, C2O4 2 minus, um, what we're actually going to do if we uh, react this in a redox reaction is form CO2, and we're actually going to form two CO2s, that balances up the oxygens as well. I just need to balance the charges. I've got two minus charge here, no charge here. I need two electrons on this side. Okay, so I'm hoping from this, you are already being able to see what the overall equation might look like. So the overall equation for the reaction of these two um, is just gonna be a combination of them. However, we need to make sure the electrons are also balanced. So for this uh, first uh, overall equation, we are gonna times this example here by two. We are gonna times this one on the bottom by five, and that means we'd have 10 electrons here, 10 electrons there. Okay, and let's do a new section for this. Let us write um, overall equations. Okay, so if we were going to do this one, uh, we would have this times two, so we're gonna have 16 H plus plus two, MnO4 minus, the electrons will cancel. We are going to have uh, 5 C2O4 2 minus, and we are going to be forming uh, 2 Mn2 plus plus 8 H2O and uh, 10 CO2. So this is our first mark here. So I'm going to put a 1 just to there to show that's our first mark in this question out of 6. Okay, we have now formed um, Mn2+. And actually, this is the, the species that is going to be catalyzing our um, reaction. So let's uh, put another half equation up here. This time we're going to have Mn2+. And really simple this one. Because um, manganese can have uh, variable oxidation states, we are going to be could well we could form Mn3+ plus and an electron. Um, the second mark for this question is for saying that Mn. Well, actually, sorry, our second mark is for saying that Mn2 plus is the catalyst. The third mark is for saying that it has variable 
oxidation states. Okay, we identified that it is the catalyst because it can have very variable oxidation states. But what is it actually doing here? Well, if we look at this um, this overall reaction here, it's actually a reaction between two negatively charged ions. Um, and thermodynamically, this will work. However, kinetically, they are going to repel each other. It's going to have a very, very high activation energy. However, if we were going to use Mn2 plus or Mn3 plus um, as catalysts, you're going to have a negative ion and a positive ion. So fourth mark in this question is for saying that the A reduced, that's the energy of activation for the reaction, is reduced as um, negative and positive ions attract. You could flip it around, you could say that um, um, for this uh, section here we've got two negative ions so they're going to repel um, okay so what we now need to do is be able to explain why mn2 plus is acting as a catalyst so let's look back at our half equations in this one here we've got mn2 plus going to mn3 plus plus an electron um, yep so if you imagine this reaction is going this way that mn2 plus would actually be able to react with mn04 minus so let's try and turn this one into a um, a uh, overall reaction. This time we've got five electrons here. We've only got one electron here. So if we times that one by five, we're going to end up with um, eight H plus uh, plus MnO4 minus plus Mn2 plus. We've got five of them, and we're going to be forming um, Mn. 2 plus plus H2O plus 5 Mn3 plus. Um, if you're going to write it like this, you would have to spot that Mn2 plus appears on both sides of this reaction. Um, we can actually cancel uh, cancel him out. So we can get rid of that. Okay, and that one should be a 4 there. Okay, so this equation here, you don't actually have to write that in full to get the mark here, but I would recommend doing that. That is our fifth mark. And the final mark is for um, completing the final uh, overall equation, which we would do for, um, yeah, for, uh, for turning Mn3 plus here back into um, Mn2 plus. If we imagine it look back at this half equation here, um, we would actually flip this one round this time. We need the electron to be um, electron, sorry, to be on this side for this half equation, and the opposite side for this half equation. Um, so we're actually going to flip this round. We're going to be turning Mn3 plus back into Mn2 plus. This time, to balance the electrons, we're going to times that by two. And I need to be careful here because I always get this slightly wrong. We'll see if I can get it right this time. Okay, so we're going to start off. Let's write this one out um, as it is written here. So C2. O4 2 minus, and we're going to be forming 2 CO2. This one we're going to write the other way around, and we need to remember to times it by 2. So that one is going to be Mn3 plus. Um, only two of them, and on the other side, 2 Mn2 plus. Oops. That was silly. Um, <laughs> and this is our final mark. Okay, so to summarise, always write out these autocatalysis reactions as uh, half equations first. Here we've got three half equations which we used in a variety of ways to write three overall equations. Our first mark was for using our two half equations for the reactants we are given and to write an overall equation, which was this one here. Um, because it's autocatalyzed, we then said that Mn2 plus is catalyzed in the reaction. Um, so we had to then work out some uh, overall equations using the variable oxidation states of Mn2 plus slash Mn3 plus. Um, remember that the activation energy is reduced when we form this Mn2 plus ion because the Mn2 plus or Mn3 plus will be attracted to the oppositely charged ions. Uh, the final part of this question asks you to draw a graph. And what it asks you to do is to um, describe the draw a graph show, sorry, to show the concentration of potassium manganate um, as this reaction uh, progresses. 
And so from our overall equation, we are using up manganate, uh, manganate 7, sorry, as the reaction progresses. So you could draw your graph to look something like this. And it's concentration of Mn O4 minus. And then on the here will be progress or time, whatever you want it to be. Okay, so at the start of the reaction, it's going to take um, the reaction rate is going to be extremely slow because the MnO4 minus ions will be, uh, will, be, will be repelling the ethane diawate ion. So it starts off as a very, very slow reaction rate, and therefore the concentration stays quite high. However, as we are forming Mn2 plus, the autocatalyst, that is going to be catalyzing the reaction and speeding the rate up. So we're going to get a dip here. As MnO4 minus starts to run out, we start to use up our reactants, the reaction rate will slow down again. So we actually get a um, an S-shaped um, concentration uh, graph for MnO4 minus. On the flip side, you might be asked to draw a graph to show the concentration of, say, um, CO2, or I guess Mn2 plus in this reaction. Um, and that would be the opposite way around. So our graph for that one would look something like this. Let's let's imagine we're in a sealed room. Let's do the concentration of carbon dioxide. At the start, the reaction rate again is going to be very slow. However, we have no carbon dioxide at the start. So it's effectively going to look like the inverse of the opposite graph. We're going to start off with a very, very slow reaction rate. As we form the catalyst, the reaction rate will speed up. And as the reactants are used up, the reaction rate will slow it down. So the concentration of CO2 will start to level off. So have a look back through this. In summary, I would say always write half equations first because it makes it much, much more straightforward later on. And once you've done that, you can start to write overall equations and figure out what the um, autocatalyst is and write half equations for that.